Journalists, we strive to give you all sides of a story, and these days we're taking that motto literally. We're about to show a more immersive kind of storytelling, all shot in virtual reality. Wait till you see this. It lets the viewer feel the experience rather than just see it. It's part of what we call CBS News Bay Area in 360, and today... Today, we are taking you inside the car of tomorrow. So you may have seen these futuristic looking cars all over San Francisco, but what you won't see anywhere near these cars, a human driving them. If you've ever wondered what it feels like to sit in a car with no one at the steering wheel, well, our Itai Hot has you covered. We'll show you how to watch this in 360 in just a moment. But first, here's Itai's story in 2D. From the engineering prowess of the Golden Gate Bridge to its earthquake-resistant skyscrapers, San Francisco has always been ahead of the curve, shaping the future at every turn. But driving around the city can sometimes feel like an ever-changing obstacle course, with its complex network of winding roads, unpredictable weather, and next to impossible parking. It's why Bay Area native James K. Alohi says he gave up on owning a car altogether. It's pretty inconvenient to own a car, and uh, the parking situation throughout the city is not very good. How long does it take to find parking? Longer than it takes to get to places frequently. But today, James is about to take the ride of his life. We are off. Oh my goodness. The wheel is moving. Other cars approaching. This is pretty trippy. <laughs> An employment director at the San Francisco LGBT Center, James often checks up on dozens of clients throughout the city. Getting to them is half the battle, but recently the center has partnered up with Google's parent company Alphabet to help test its new driverless taxi Waymo. And this morning, James gets to take it on a solo spin for the first time. I remember being a child and seeing the Jetsons as a kid. And so this does seem incredibly futuristic. It may sound like science fiction, but driverless technology has accelerated in recent years. Waymo is one of the first companies to deploy a fleet of fully autonomous taxis in California and Arizona. So this is it. This is it. Software engineer Reed Morse took us on a tour of the company's depot in southeast San Francisco where the cars park themselves for a quick cleaning and recharge. And how many of these cars do you have? Uh, across the country, we have over 700 cars. We have a couple hundred here in San Francisco. These fully electric Jaguar I-Pace come with what the company calls its Waymo driver, a combination of hardware and software that serve as the car's eyes and ears. How far can these cars see? It's a great question. Um, so. On the very top here, you see our long-range LiDAR. That can see over three football fields, over 300 wow. meters. Yeah, and there's a bunch of cameras. This car actually has 27 cameras as well. So that's really good for seeing at night and during the day, um, seeing long distances as well. And then the radars here, um, you have radars across the car. Um, these are really good for things like rain, snow, and fog. You can see on the screen up there a bunch of... But it's the view inside the car that will make even the most jaded reporter do a double take. Here we go. This is amazing. These cars can watch for pedestrians, change lanes, and even make turns on their own. The company recently rolled out new features, including autonomous parallel parking during pickups and drop-offs, and better navigation around double-parked cars and construction. So there's nothing you need to do to make this car take over? Exactly. You can't take over. Yeah. In fact, if you touch the wheel, the car will come to a stop and ask you to please knock it off. Really? Yeah. Don't try that, but yes. It's hard not to be impressed. The car was able to recognize red lights and merge into traffic without a hitch. It's a bit slower and more cautious than your average driver. But that, Reed says, is by design. Do these cars ever go above the speed limit? No. 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 They're programmed not to speed. That's illegal. We don't like to speed. The road to self-driving has had more than a few speed bumps. Last year, Ford and Volkswagen pulled the plug on their autonomous joint venture after the cost of driverless technology ramped up. And then, of course, there's the question of safety. City transportation officials have raised concerns about whether these cars are ready for prime time 
after a Waymo taxi stopped in the middle of a busy intersection, bringing traffic to a halt. Another driverless car made by a competitor almost ran over a fire hose as firefighters were battling a two alarm blaze. What do you tell people who might be skittish about getting into a car that doesn't have that human element? Absolutely, I think it's totally understandable um, to be a little bit worried in the beginning. Once you're sitting in the car, you know, we have the screen that shows you everything the car is seeing. Um, and we found that once people um, experience a ride in the car, they quickly gain confidence in it and understand that it's a safe and competent way to get around. Waymo says driverless cars are safe precisely because they don't have a human at the wheel. They don't drink, get tired, and they're never on their phones. With more than a million autonomous smiles driven on public roads, the company has only had two collisions. In those cases, Waymo says, it was because their cars were rear-ended by distracted drivers. But perhaps the biggest advantage is for those who dread small talk. Some people don't get along with the driver, or sometimes drivers don't want to take you where you want to go, and we're building a car that won't do that. Uh, it'll go exactly where you want to go, um, and it won't, it won't ever argue with you about that, it won't ever kick you out of the car. Waymo is now expanding its service, testing its driverless cars in Los Angeles. The company is waiting on one final permit before going fully operational in San Francisco. For James, his first ride was a trip into the future, one he won't forget anytime soon. I am shocked by how comfortable this experience has been for me. As for San Francisco, a city that's seen its share of quakes, this is a seismic shift in transportation, one that gives new meaning to the phrase, reinventing the wheel. I know a lot of people are so curious about this, and I'm just fascinated by it as well. Join me now is Itai Hod. Okay, so I, I've got the VR goggles ready to go here in a second because we're going to give everyone kind of a new perspective of this. But first off, what was it like to actually get in the car without a driver? Yeah, that's like the $64,000 question, right? We see these cars everywhere, but it's not until you actually get inside that okay. you kind of get a sense of what it's like to not have that person at the wheel. So we're going to now check it out in 3D. It's yes. going to be a bit of a trip. Have you ever done 3D before? You know, this is my first time putting okay, on VR you're in goggles. For a trip. So this there will be go. interesting. Quite literally. Okay, you're going to take the controls. Okay, I wore okay. tennis shoes today too, to be safe. <laughs> That's a good way to go. <laughs> and now you can start looking around, and what you'll see, everyone at home is going to be able to see what you're seeing on your goggles. And now you can see the, the wheel. And if you look up, you'll see the ceiling wow. of a car. And it really does give you that feeling of being inside the car uh, like no other way, right? You know, seeing the wheel is actually very surprising and kind of shocking because you're literally, it does feel like you're driving in a vehicle. I feel like I'm in, on a ride kind of at a, you know, at a park, but That's it's- funny that you say that. I told the, um, the engineer, I was like, it feels like you're in Disneyland. And he does. said, it does, it really does. And you know, at first it takes a couple of seconds to get used to being in a car that doesn't have that uh, human element. But then after a while, you kind of get used to it. You do get used to it, you know, and it's, it's interesting how you said it. it took a little while for you to get physically in the vehicle. I think if anyone is nervous about maybe trying something like this, this is probably a good way to sort of, you know, test the waters a little bit because it does make you feel a little bit more comfortable. And that's why we chose this specific story to tell it in VR. We're looking for stories where the virtual reality component makes sense, right? That you can really get something out of it. And so we, we looked at skiing, we looked at a magic forest, and then we thought, what would it be like to be inside one of these cars and give someone the feeling of what it's like to test it out without actually being inside of them? It's so futuristic, Itai, which is so interesting. And I think, you know, a lot of people with questions of safety, you know, we've heard a couple of stories about how autonomous vehicles had issues with storm. It, it, the, in the story, you brought up a very good point of just how they can sort of see far ahead and really have a lot more, you know, see further than maybe where we could see. Yeah, and they can see better when it comes to weather because of all the radar and the LIDAR and all of those cameras. Of course, there are many people who think that, uh, it's not yet ready. Um, a lot of people in the, uh, in the city who are still kind of pushing back on this. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few months. Obviously, Waymo is hoping that this is going to go their way. 